Is it number 12? Number 12. 12. Welcome to the Poor Show for the Sounds of City podcast. Number 12. You're joining myself once again, Chris, by my lovely Poor Show people. To my right, your left, my left, your right. We've got the techie teacher and his sexy Assassin's Creed Valhalla t-shirt. Mr. Tom. What colour is that guy's face, by the way? It looks very glowy. Oh, is it glow in the dark? It does, doesn't it? I don't know. Shall I test oh, it out? Yeah, Shall yeah, I actually yeah. test it out? All right. This is live. Oh, no, I think exclusive. live. It's pre-recorded. Yeah. Let's see what this looks like. Okay. <laughs> I thought that's all you were going to do, turn the light off. I was like, that's yeah, not going to make say, any not difference. Not much change there. <laughs> it's oh. not dark enough. It's just oh. not dark enough in here. These are, they're not. You have to yeah. stop buying the first night stream to have a look. Oh, uh, yeah, we're going to have to try oh, no. it on the late show. Oh, the late, the late, late, late show. Sounds anyway. like after dark. We've after dark. Oh, I need well. a better chair, actually. Hey, Think, speaking of uh, glow in the dark things, some of my like, as an adult, it's very rare. Uh, I don't know about YouTube, but I don't really wear pajamas anymore. I just, I'm quite happy to sleep in my briefs, uh, boxes, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> when I was a child, <laughs> my favourite pajamas. I had some Jurassic Park Lost World pajamas that had a glow in the dark Velociraptor on the front, and they were the bomb. Like, I challenge you to send me a picture of a better pair of pajamas. I'll wait. <laughs> Do either of you two have any favorite pajamas? There you go there. Favorite pajamas. I had um I had when the I think I might have mentioned this to you when we actually went and did our little Lord of the Rings marathon, but when the first film came out there were some like limited edition t shirts that they released which were almost like that parchment like the map print mm. um in terms of like the material. The material was that like map print colour um and effect it wasn't made out of parchment it wasn't a parchment t-shirt there wasn't <laughs> any like so childhood cruelty <laughs> um, and it had like it had the elvish print on there that said frodo lives um and it had the date that the fellowship of the ring um premiered on the back of it but because they were limited in number my stepdad got one for himself which fit him perfectly mm-hmm. but for me he he could only get because I'm, I'm I'm a rather large lad. Like I need I need I need at least XL clothing. Um, he got me a four XL. <laughs> <laughs> so he bought you a tent. This thing, you a this tent. thing was a, was basically a tent. So yeah, I used I used to wear. I I wore that to death. Like I literally wore it till it fell apart. But it was comfy as it was just the the quality of that material was just lovely. Yeah. Richie, any notable pajamas in your history? <laughs> Not I can really remember to be honest. Oh. Um, I'm I'm like you. I don't wear pajamas as an adult. I don't think I've worn pajamas since probably my early teens. At the like, yeah, I'm I'm curious as to what point in your life you switched to wearing. You know, like the long pajamas. I feel like most people wear like just like the one. With the butt almost, flap. No, the one. <laughs> no, 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 not that quite stage in your life. You know the pajamas that they're almost like it's like a shirt and the buttons are at the front and it has a pocket for yeah. some reason. <laughs> Usually, oh, in like yeah. usually well, in like a dark navy with some kind of print on it, I don't and know. then I the long some trousers. Pe- some people just, I think, swear, swear by stuff like that. I tend to wear like an old t-shirt and a pair of shorts on my boxes or something to bed. Yeah, like comfy what, whatever's comfortable at the time, really. That's yeah. I mean, I've got a Captain America onesie that's kicking back there, yeah. and I love it. Like it's the most comfy thing ever, but I'd never wear it to sleep in. <laughs> like it's like it's like a furnace. It's literally mm. like being wrapped in fleece. So I'd be sweating. But yeah. Would you wear I, it to go to the I, shop, though? I don't think I'm that that sort of trash level, to be <laughs> honest with you. Like, I'm very, very close. Very, very close. Very tempting. Just whack on my flip-flops and go out in it. But uh, oh. I think people would be like, like, who's Captain America? Like, what? He's yeah. let himself go a little bit, hasn't he? <laughs> getting, getting the milk and bread in. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. No. Speaking of uh, speaking of uh, <laughs> groceries and uh, shopping in a onesie, uh, of course, the topic of the show, the post show where we talk about non necessary gaming stuff, but we try and keep it stadium related. Uh, with next gen on the horizon, gentlemen, we are we are mere weeks away from it, and Stadia is very much part of that next gen conversation, uh, as is PlayStation Five, Xbox Series X, and onwards, and uh, PC, of course. Let's not forget you, uh, Nintendo. We don't know what your next gen plans are yet i'm sure we'll hear about them soon if you can even call the them switch you the switch oh that's a bad move <laughs> oh, no. um, but what i wanted to do is just kind of theorize and discuss 
uh, what games we'd love to see. We mentioned in the main show that uh, the future of next gen is really more convenience. Is there anything we saw battle royales this this time round become like the big next genre? Yep. And it got me thinking what type of game I would love to see from either select studios, exclusives. I've got one in my mind that I'm throwing around uh, that I'd love to see. Um, either of you got anything come to mind immediately or would you like me to go into my... I mean, I can delve way down into the depths of my JRPG history and just be like, right, I need to see this. I need to see this. I need to see this. Yeah. There's so many games out there that I want to see sequels of. Mm. Like, I just so desperately. So are we allowing those? Yeah, yeah, of course. It's anything, yeah, okay. whether it's it's brand new from scratch made up or it's something that you've just, you've wanted I'd, for so long and it's just, it's not. Okay. I'd even include remasters and remakes into this conversation as yeah, long well, as it's next generation standard. Yeah, unlike Prince of Persia. <laughs> choppy, <laughs> choppy, choppy. Well, well, yeah. that's, that's, uh, that's, that's so a shout. Then, Tom, what, um, mm. what games would you like to see next gen? If so, I... If I were to go, there's a, there's a few that come to mind, um, and they're quite. It's quite a shotgun approach to this, really. So, like I said, I'm a massive like everybody knows by now, massive JRPG fan. Um, title I absolutely loved and have would love to see either remade or a sequel to it. Um, bring it back to the front. Bring it back to the limelight. Um, Legend of Dragoon was an incredible JRPG that I used to play. Um, Again, same sort of like kind of titles as like Final Fantasies and so on in sort of like the style of the way that you play it. Turn-based RPG, you've got characters with different abilities, magic and so on. But each of them had like the soul of a dragon um, that they were sort of like bound to and they were dragoons. So they were like dragon riders or dragon warriors. And um, they each had their own little combo system as well that within the battle you'd have to like their abilities be controlled by like button presses so you could get like a chain combo in the fight but um that game sort of like came and went it was it was a solid i want to say it was a four disc jrpg as well so it's like four four discs are so sort of like so your, a proper um, jrpg then yeah yeah proper <laughs> jrpg like your final fantasy final fantasy eight at that point wasn't it really yeah. um or final fantasy nine even but yeah it sort of came and it sort of went and it's got such a like it had such a legacy at its time for anyone who is a JRPG fan. But then it just sort of like gets overlooked and it just sorts of get like brushed down in the back somewhere yeah. there. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm leaning to towards um, JRPG myself. Probably something similar because I think the best JRPG battle system I've ever played, I, in my opinion, was Final Fantasy X. Mm -hmm. I think the turn based battling system and that is basically flawless. It's fantastic. But Square, with the mainline Final Fantasies, with 15 and now 7 Remake, are going slightly more action-y route, which they're great games, but it's leaving, I think, a gap in the market for a dedicated AAA turn-based RPG. be interesting to see what happens with 16 now that 16 has been announced, yeah. mm. to see where they go with that. Do they stick to like the historic... I uh, traditional system or do they go with the newer sort of like final fantasy 15 i would style? strongly expect it to be something similar to 15 or 7 re remake a kind of hybrid style battle, battle yeah. system yeah well they, they sell but, more right because that's what happened with why resident evil changed from its typical horror to more actiony because the the truth is as much as we prefer that style of game the action element as a game yeah style yeah. sells it sells more but, copies and as a business that you lean towards what which what, is what does well yeah I'm I'm fine. I I really like fifteen. I really like seven remake. But taking Final Fantasy out of that area in gaming is leaving a gap where I think Square can fill with a new IP, okay, or an adaptation of one of the older IPs or, or something. Mm. There's a gap there that I want filling basically. Which is the new one that got announced? Is that seventeen? Sixteen. 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 Is the new one. And that's exclusive yeah. to PlayStation, right? <clears throat> on console um <clears throat> on console yeah it's still coming to pc as well right which is why i hate that term yeah, i hate yeah. that term like exclusive yeah. to console how does that yeah. impact stadia because it's not a console i mean stadia is not a console so. <laughs> so could it come to stadia it's this sure is, uh, cloud gaming is added in, for me it's added another thing into the mix where you've got consoles pcs and now cloud gaming as a fed
as a third what? As as a kind of third um, strata of gaming. Um, right. So so I don't know whether the old labels work very well. So like when you say console gaming, hmm. I, does that include Stadia or does it not? And the, I think there's going to probably at some point be some legal battles regarding that sort of, yeah. if there hasn't already, <clears throat> because we're talking like what it in the contracts. If Sony hmm. signed a contract with Square going, it's exclusive to it's PlayStation exclusive to consoles and then the launch on Stadia, Square might go, Stadia's not a console. Yeah, yeah, they could. I'm sure they and would like, Sony like, yes, it up. is. <laughs> it's like, Certainly. Uh, so I think there's going to probably be a point in the next couple of years where a high-profile legal battle to decide <laughs> this t- terminology. Will it be yeah. in a JRPG style battle or Richie where Sony takes a turn? And then square, <laughs> and then you have to wait for the ATV bar <laughs> yeah. to fill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So nice. the re- the reason I ask is because the the Final Fantasy sixteen because it's more uh, that traditional swords and shields fantasy uh, style yeah. Yeah. that actually from the trailer has my interest peaked, and I've never played Ooh. a Final Fantasy game aside from like the initial openings of them. Um, so the remake I played like the opening hour when you put the bombs in and you escape the. Uh, yeah, the big players. The, the demo, essentially. The, yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah, done, yeah. done all that, and uh, I played the old okay. ones back in the day, but they never vibed with me then. But this one, it's okay. kind of in that kind of Lord of the Rings esque fantasy style. That it's got me, it's got me intrigued. So it's you hear it's that square more high fantasy. You hear mm. that square Enix? Yeah. You might have a new fan on board, but you got to do it right. You do it right. right. <laughs> well, the, one of the things for Final Square do with Final Fantasy, they do change, they like, completely change. Like setting a lot from game to game. Mm-hmm. Yes, they do. It's like you look That's, at yeah. the, the, the three biggest games I'd say in the series are a seven, ten, and fifteen at the moment, and they're very different games in terms of setting. Mm. Fifteen is almost more is a lot more modern. Mm. Do you think with next gen there's ever a point that could should maybe drop the number because it's a what, bit Final daunting Fa- the Final Fantasy title? To, yeah, just, no. not, not the title Final Fantasy, but just the number because as an it's outsider a looking now, in, though, it's, it's like. Yeah. Yeah. Do I want to start on sixteen? But they're not sequels. Yeah, no, but uh, yeah, but I wouldn't know that if I if you guys didn't tell me. I just say it as it's a sixteen yeah. and go, oh shit! There's a lot of stuff I need to know before I even think twice about looking at this. I don't know. I think this is the one where if you if you saw like if you watch the trailer of Final Fantasy sixteen, and you're interested in the game, you go a quick Google search and you'll find the that info. It's not like hidden away or anything. It's Surely Square Enix now are going for the record of like the longest running franchise with the longest like numbered sequence in it as well. They're going for like the one piece of anime like equivalent in the video game world. There's yeah. not I can't think of any other game series that has I don't... like sixteen I mean it's not even sixteen games. You think you've also got it's 10, sixteen 10, core two. series games. Yeah, you've got well, 16. Actually, you could even include like 10 2 as a core series game. Exactly, exactly. 10 2, you've got 13, 13 2, 13 Lightning Returns. Like, there's, there are other games within those series as well. It's just yeah. it's the 16th iteration of whatever the final like, Final Fantasy will be. Well, it's, it's ironic because wasn't the name like Final Fantasy, like Square, basically the last hurrah for like a fantasy styled. Um... R- RPG, and then yep. it just like, blew up, and then Absolutely. sixteen games later. Hmm. I just like to say, Richie, is, a, is what you said there. I did a quick Google of Final Fantasy mm-hmm. sixteen, and the the research I found is that it's an upcoming action role playing game <clears throat> developed by Square Enix for PlayStation Five as part of the Final action. Fantasy series. It's being produced by uh, Nakao Yoshida and is directed by Hiroshi Takai. Um, the premise, it's set in a fantasy world divided by several factions, including Twin Kingdoms, uh, Zambrek Empire. The world is suffering um, through Blight, which is kept up there by a mother crystal, etc., etc. Nowhere have I seen yet that it is separate from the rest of the series. Interesting. Okay, I so... corrected. I, 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 have to, I have to also say that one thing you've just said there as well is it says it's an action RPG. That tells me it is going to be more like the fifteen. If it's action RPG, it's going to be like 7 Remake and 15. Anyway, where are we getting off topic here? Chris, what game would you like to see come to next year? Oh, well, so <laughs> aside from all the Final Fantasies and all the numbers, um, I, had a, I had a thought the other day. Is I think it was The the Last of Us 2 got an award for something. Some best, like one of the best games of the generation, I think. They were given one of that. Rightly so, by the way. Most polarizing. Most polarizing. 
Um, and that got me thinking, like, what their next project is. And then with the launch of PlayStation 5 and them having Miles Morales and they have the Avengers Spider-Man exclusive um, kind of character pack Mac there, and it made me think that, oh, well, Sony owns Spider-Man. That's why a lot of these deals come to fruition. And then I was just thinking about general pop culture and stuff and like, what games would I like to see that are different and like games that I, I really, really love. And it got me thinking about a few things. So also this week we got some new pictures of The Witcher 3 drop. We saw Henry Cavill in all his uh, Geralt of Rivia gear again and we saw um, some other images is, uh, revealed. And then also in the rumour mill you've got Henry Cavill apparently is, is a shoe in potentially for the next James Bond after Daniel Craig steps down after No Time to Die. And putting all these amazing pop culture things together, I'm thinking, we've got Naughty Dog, who are now off the back of Last of Us 2. They're probably not going to be in another Uncharted game after wrapping up that. So we've got, essentially, in my opinion, the best studio, game studio for the narrative storytelling available to do something. You've got Sony, who like flexing their muscles with... Um, their exclusives, what they've got. Spider-Man, case in point. It's every, Spider-Man is like everywhere, but Sony own him to a degree. So you get an exclusive Spider-Man game. Sony own James Bond as well. And they're on the cusp of changing it. Yeah, I, I know see you're going. Way of I, know, I, you know, I know exactly what you're going to do. You're going to go, you want to see a new Naughty Dog 8K Ultra HD 120 FPS high res, high definition Crash Bandicoot game live action. No, that is <laughs> with no a real right. Bandicoot, no, he wants to voiced see by is, Henry Cavill. He wants to see Henry Cavill and Spandex. I mean, who wouldn't? But that's not the yeah. point. <laughs> He's a handsome so, chap. <laughs> so feeding off that, so you've got again Henry Cavill, who we know is a massive gamer. Everyone's checked out the video of him taking apart the uh, the PC build, us doing his PC build a few weeks back. Um, building want, it, yeah, building yeah, it. Yeah. And I just, I just, I don't know. I just like ideally all the pieces. So you've got Naughty Dog, who from Uncharted they tell amazing story. Um, you could have James Bond's gadgets play into like the the climbing mechanics that Nathan Drake is is famed for. Um, the biggest thing for me with the Uncharted and Last of Us games is you buy into the characters, just like you would James Bond and his cast of supporting people. And I just think okay. it seems to me like it could be the perfect storm. It's a new IP for Naughty Dog to focus their powers on. Yeah. It's Sony flexing their exclusive. Um, or IP ownership in, in being the James Bond franchise. You've got Henry Cavill, who's rumoured to be the next James Bond, who I guarantee you would be down for doing more cap for a game as well, so he's actually in the game yeah. rather than just doing it. Um, I just think it could be a perfect storm for... Imagine, like, I have not had a good James Bond game since 007 Nightfire on PlayStation 2, arguably. I'd, I'd agree. That's, that would be awesome. Um, I think the timing would be have to be quite interesting because you'd probably want to... I'm assuming we're going to go. This is a unique story. This is separate to oh, anything. Yeah, movies. yeah, it would probably have to be. But unless they probably, wanted to tie it in. But I think James Bond as a franchise has been on the way in a bit it, at the moment because it just. it's it, The movies t tend to be a little hit or miss. It seems like every other movie is a good one. Mm. And then there's huge gaps between them as well. So I don't think it has the sting. I don't. I don't know. I just don't know if James Bond at the moment has the stature to sell a game for on its on its own. Yeah, but, I, I like I, the idea, but again, I, I sort of feel like I don't know. I don't know. Perhaps. perhaps. But this is this is where yeah, I think if, if the movies are Henry on, Dog, way, that could give it that gravitas. That's it. Yes. I think any. Let's be <clears> honest. <throat> no one can come out with a brand new IP, and it would get recognition immediate, and people would be looking at it, and it's going to be solid triple a quality because it's naughty dog yeah. then attach that to in your opinion richie a, a floundering ip necessarily yeah i think it could and again the i'm thinking of the game mechanics it's a shooter like duck and cover protection and climbing and puzzle solving all lends itself to gamification and then also being a super secret agent with gadgets yeah. like little mini games and stuff those puzzles like those yeah. bioshock puzzles we all love figuring out connect the pipes um I, yeah, this, that that was my kind of yeah. theorizing of stuff that um, that yeah. I, I was coming you've, to fruition. You've with. just reminded me of something that I said on a on one of our Thursday night community streams a couple of weeks ago, and it's a Black Widow a stealth action game. Yeah, Think Metal cool. Gear Solid only MCU. That's what I want to see next gen Metal Gear Solid. Thank you, Richie. You've done it for me. Case closed. No, that is, no <laughs> I, I want new, nah, new Metal Gear Solid. That. Oh, yeah. 
we'll give can we give um, Kojima Productions Black Widow to play with? I don't think he'd want think... to. I think he likes doing his own yeah. thing. I think that's just Kojima yeah. in a nutshell. He just likes doing his own thing. Yeah. Can we take but his I like the though? idea. Yeah. I like the <laughs> I like the idea. Yeah. I I just like to say in terms of James Bond Richie as well, Skyfall is the twentieth highest ranking uh, rating the profitability movie of all time with one point one eight billion. Uh, yeah. That's why I said so, every other Casino Reality go- was good. Um, Quantum Solace, not very you can so them, Keep going. Sky Skyfall went quite well. Spectre, crap. So, so the next one should be good. So you're saying no time to die. Daniel Craig's final outing uh, should be a good film. That, if that's if that's Daniel Craig's last one, doesn't that mean that Henry Cavill's first one or the rumored? Uh, well, reset. again, then it goes back <laughs> to yeah. Does it reset because Pierce Brosnan's Goldeneye was arguably his best one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then also the game Goldeneye as well. We all have um, amazing memories. I mean, of that. it's a masterpiece. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. hold up for shit, but at the time, it certainly. Well, no, it doesn't hold up at all. But yeah. it's, um, it's one of the greatest games of all time hmm. when you put in the context of when yeah. it came out. I just think it would lend itself so well to multiplayer as well. Like you have your agents, and you have it can either be Hitman style gameplay or it can be I, four people. I hope they, I hope they don't wouldn't go that route. To be honest, because I think sometimes when you try to do a, a solid single player campaign and multiplayer, mm-hmm. they get in the way of each other. True. That's why they could keep it separate, like factions and the yeah. Last of Us are doing as well. But ha, ha, uh, have them as separate yeah, games. Yeah, I just want to see something like the really like I haven't. Pl- um, 007 Bloodstone was made in the Call of Duty engine by Activision, and it was a Bond game. Like again, the the kind of, I feel like the tropes are there to be great, and I think we looked at this generation and we got some great new IP out of it. And I think every new next generation kicks off, and studios look at the tech, they look at the tools at their disposal, and go right. Do we just continue churning out the same thing year in year out that we have been doing for the last decade, or? Do we use this opportunity? I think there's a lot of studios that now, once they get to a certain size, they split into two now. One focuses yeah. on their main project, and then one starts up a new IP. And um, yeah, that's something I, I would a lot, see. A lot of it, I think that is. I think most developers, it, it's a creative industry. You don't want to be creating the same thing over and over and over and over again. I think that's one of the big sources of developer burnout. Why you mm. see like pr- prominent names jump studio because well, I've done all everything I want to with this IP, but I get their studio wants to publish the next game yeah but yeah but i can yeah not everyone's nintendo <laughs> not everyone can just keep churning out mario and zelda games <laughs> that's true but yeah you heard Fantastic. it here first ladies and gentlemen sony exclusive naughty dog studios henry cavill as james bond in a chad esque yeah. adventure crash bandicoot game <laughs> if henry cavill was cast as crash bandicoot more capping it who would you cast as uh, neo cortex tom who would be Ken- henry cavill's antagonist <laughs> what other famed actor could you drag into the world of games? Steve Buscemi. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd have to go Danny DeVito. Can you imagine Danny DeVito's oh, wow, Cortex? Yeah. I, I, I was thinking Jim Carrey. I want someone to full on chew the scenery. We're just <laughs> like, jumping around from Batman Forever villains now. Yeah. <laughs> and also, like, yeah. Uma Thurman <laughs> is, the, is yeah. his love interest. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. a, that's a banger. Because I'd want, if, like, Henry Cavill is quite serious in his most of his portrayals mm-hmm. having someone like opposite like jim carrey who's just literally the polar opposite <laughs> yeah that's true we could even cast uh, arnold schwarzenegger instead of mr freeze he could be the uh, tiny tiger in crash bandicoot we've got a film to make <laughs> let's go we've got we've got we've got stuff to make ladies and gentlemen but let us know in the comments below what you would Hugh like Jackman, to see dingo dial <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, down below uh, what games you'd like to see for next gen uh, whether they're sequels remakes remasters or just some crazy shit you can pull out of your ass and and throw onto a game platform but let us know thank you very much for watching for the post show episode number 12 uh my name's been chris i've been whoa <laughs> whoa <laughs> i'm just i I'm don't just doing know it. how to follow that <laughs> come on give us your best crash bandicoot impression richie uh, no <laughs> <laughs> okay i've been tom <laughs> I've been Crash. Uh, we've been Sounds of Stadia yeah. for the poor show. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Have a great week of gaming. Goodbye. Goodbye. Richie hates his life right now.
he's like why do i have to be the last one <laughs> why do i have to follow that absolute just, fucking nutter i just blanked on crash that's like what's does no. crash sound like i have no idea it's like Whoa. no <laughs> I'm not doing it. I can't. I just... wow wow it's yeah. very high pitched yeah it is there you go